Good day and welcome to our short demonstration and explanation of how to set up folder redirection on Windows Server 2022 coming from Windows 10. Take note that this is exactly the same process for Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019 and the Windows 11 client. Configuration is the same. Now this is a two-part video. In the first part, we're going to go through the setup and get it working. The second video, which we'll have a link at the end, answers the question, what happens when you turn folder redirection off? Will those files actually come back from the server to your local computer? And the answer is not what you think. So let's get on with part one. Right in front of you is a Windows 10 machine just freshly installed. And we also have a Windows Server 2022 domain controller. So the first thing we're going to do is set up folder redirection and then we're going to test it and then we're going to turn the policy off and see what happens to the files. We want to make sure we don't break things. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is to create a share for the folder redirections. So let's do that. Now I'm on a domain controller. You would never do this in real life. This is purely for lab purposes. You would do this on a file server or anything other than a domain controller, but I'm going to. Now you can create the share any way you want, but I like to do it the old way. However, most people seem to like to use server manager. So we'll go with the server manager way to show you how to do it. So just wait for it to finish off. And under file and storage services, you can click on shares and then click tasks and new share. Uh, we want to do an SMB quick share. And where do you want to put it? Well, just go into type custom path and click browse. I'm going to select the C drive and I'm going to select new folder and I'm going to call this readers. You call it whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference. And then just double click on it and select select folder, then click next. Now uh, we need to keep this path for the future. So uh, what we need to do is copy that. Before we do that, you want to make this a hidden share. So put a dollar sign at the end and then copy that path. So just highlight it and I'm going to press control C. You can right click and copy whatever works for you. Click next, enable access based enumeration. All this is saying is if you don't have access to it, you can't see it. Great for security because it's very difficult to hack what you can't even see. Let's click next. These permissions we can make work, but it's not least permissions and that's what we should be using. So let's click customize permissions and uh, we need to disable the inheritance and uh, then convert the inherited to explicit. There we go. So now these permissions are things we can edit. In particular, we need to get rid of this generic users account. So click on that and select remove. And there should be just three left here. Authenticated system and administrators. Wait a minute, that's not right. Authenticated user shouldn't be there. I'm not sure why it is. I was playing around a little bit before I did this, so maybe that's that was me, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, what we need to do is go into here and select created uh, creator owner. So you probably won't have to do this, but uh, you should have creator owner in there. So I'm just going to add it. There it is. And creator owner should be, I believe it's full control. So let's click OK. Yeah, there we go. Now let's get back to doing the proper security settings, which is to go into add here. And we need to say which group of users has permissions. So the select security principle. Now we don't have a group for this already. So we have to go back to our active directory users and computers and create a security group. Pretty straightforward. Just right click and select new group. It's a security group. You can make it a global or universal, whatever you'd like. And I'm going to call this folder redirect staff, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference at all. Click OK. Find that group, which in my case is right there. And add all of your staff in that you want. In my case, it is just test user. Three is the only one I'm going to do this with. There we go. I could add them in specifically, by the way, but it, groups are always better. So there we go. So let's go back to our permissions and we'll add in that group. So let's go to the field and type in folder, see what it comes up with. Folder read, there we go, folder redirect staff. And we need to change it to this folder only. And then we need to actually get in and do some special customizations here. So click show advanced 
and least permissions are as follows. There, that's what it should look like. List, read attributes, read extended, create folders and read permissions. You could have more, but this is the least. Click OK. And this is what it should look like. So you've got some special permissions for the, the, the staff. And you've got admins can, get, can at least get into the folder, but they won't be able to actually get into the files. The system can get in because, of course, it's got to do backups and things. And creator owner goes without saying. Now just click Next and Create and Close. Okay, so now we need to get into group policy. You can get into this a bunch of different ways. I still go the old way. And what you need to do is, well, I'll just make it a little wider so you can so you can get into it. Then select the OU, the organizational unit that you are wanting this to apply to. I we, we could apply it to the root because this is a lab, but I actually have things in this uh, OU I created called folder readers. You could put it to wherever your heart desires, whatever group you want this to apply to. Uh, just right click and create a, a GPO and link it here, right? And we'll call this again, folder redirect. There we go. Then just right click on it and edit. And this is in the user configuration. So we go to user settings and then down into policies, into window settings. And that, yeah, there it is, folder redirection. Now, which ones do you want to redirect? Well, I'm going to redirect, well, I'll start with what you're at, what most people are actually going to do, which is the desktop and documents. That's uh, the most common, so just, so right click on desktop, select properties, and no, it, we do want it reconfigured. We want to redirect everyone's folder to the same location. Click on that. Now the default here is correct. Create a folder for each user in the root path. And you'll recall we copied that path earlier. There it is. If you can't remember it, that's where it would be. And you can see in the example here, if the user's name was Claire, she would be redirected to that path, Claire and the desktop folder. Now here is the interesting part that I'm running for my client. Click on settings and on settings, there is this option, which is redirect the folder back to the user profile location when the policy is removed. This is the policy that I'm specifically trying to test. You may not be. You're probably just trying to set up folder redirection, but uh, I still think that's a great idea to put on there. So if this policy gets removed, then everything goes back to a normal setup and the files get moved back to the user's local machine. Click OK. Of course, you do not need to click apply. Lots of people still do, but you don't need to. Just click OK. Now I will go into the documents as well and we'll just do the same thing. We'll do this very quickly so that you don't get old. Watching, paste, settings, boom, there we go. In my case, I'm going to do something that's probably a bit silly, as I said, which is actually the point of this lab, which is to move the app data as well. That's not something that most people want to do, although there, you know, there are good reasons to do it, but it does cause, well, first of all, it causes a lot of additional complexity. Secondly, it makes things slow because a lot of programs use that app data folder for their uh, settings and configuration, as well as the registry. So it's better to have it local for most people. Okay, so we'll click OK on that. And it says, hey, that's going to be a problem if you're running old stuff. Yeah, I don't care. We're not running 2003. All right, so that's our GPO and uh, we can close this now. Now let's uh, go back to our client PC, which is this one here. And look, we can just reboot this thing. But uh, for the sake of argument, I'm gonna show you what happens if you run a GP update. So let's go to Windows PowerShell, admin, command line, or whatever tool you're using. Windows Terminal, you know, whatever. And in my case, this is an admin. Like I said, you probably won't do this at all. You'll probably just reboot and move on. I just want to show you something. So let's go here to uh, GP update slash force. And that'll say, hey, go to the domain controller and pull down whatever's current. And because I've done this as an admin, it will pull it down for the users and for the machine. And it says, Hey, there's a folder redirection thing. We can't do that until you reboot. Sure, go for it. So you log off. 
Okay, so I'm going to sign back in as my lowly test user. I'm taking a bit longer than usual, probably because it's building the folders on the server, on the domain controller. In this case, a domain controller. As we've said, that's a terrible idea to do generally. So let's go into computer. We'll go this PC. Yeah, everything looks fine there, right? As you'd expect. But take a look. You see desktop and documents have this little green icon. I'll click on that. And you can see it's got a nice online status. So let's go here and create a new folder. We'll call this test one. And let's go into here and we'll create a new text document called test one doc. And it's a dot zip. By the way, I'm going to turn on file name extensions as well as hidden items because both of them drive me nuts when they're not on. And uh, just to make sure that this isn't corrupt, I'm going to put this is a test 718 p.m. There we go and close it. File Explorer, right click on the file and select properties and you can see, yeah, it did redirect it. Now, uh, just because we're here, let's go off to our domain controller and take a look at the redirection folder, which is C readers. There it is. Test user three got created. And you think, great, we can get into this. Well, we set it so you can't. So let's go into documents. We've been denied permission, right? And that's a good thing, right? Keeps your client data safe. But you notice app data is here as well, and we can't get into that either. <laughs> just like you shouldn't be able to. All right, so let's go. Now, just for fun, I'm going to go back to the uh, client PC. So folder redirections on, we've proven it works. I'm going to go to this PC. So let's go into users and test user three and look what isn't here. Desktop and documents. Why is that? Well, because we redirected them. So if you really needed to get into them other than using well, these redirections over here, these shortcuts over here, how would you get to them? Well, you go to the server, which was test DC one in my case. And then the folder I believe was readers. Is that correct? And it was hidden, so I have to put the dollar sign at the end. Yes, there it is. If and if there were a dozen other people that had folders here, this test user wouldn't see them. Why not? Because we turned on, let's just flip over and show you, because we turned on access-based enumeration. So let's just prove that point. Let's go to C, readers. I'll create a new folder here. Doesn't make a difference what I call it. Let's go back to the client machine and I'll refresh this. Yeah, they don't see it. And that's awesome. Once again, I'll just show you that because a lot of people aren't familiar with this and it, it's really important to have. Well, I think it's really important to have. So right click on your share, go to properties and in settings, enable access based enumeration. Just a great feature. Okay, get out of that. That's a tangent, but it's important, I think, for security. Now let's drill into this, test user three. All right, so that's the end of part one. Click the top right-hand corner to go to part two, which shows you what happens when you turn this policy off. If you have any questions or concerns, please put them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please click like. It really helps with the Google algorithms. And subscribe is also huge. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.